I am so glad that we get to share music today because this is a day that the Lord has made. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I know that some of you are saying, Mrs. Snyder, that is right. This has been the best day ever. I woke up this morning and saw that after I went to sleep last night, my mom made homemade cinnamon rolls, my very favorite. I got to have those and really yummy strawberries for breakfast. It is the best day ever. Or there might be some of you that are saying, mm, Mrs. Snyder, you weren't in my house this morning. I got out of bed way too early because my dog woke me up barking. I stepped on a Lego. I went downstairs and I noticed that my sister finished the last of my favorite cereal. I opened up my computer and I found out that I have triple math assignments to do. Or if you really love math, I opened up my computer and I don't have any math to do today. No matter what your day has been so far, it's gonna be a great day because God has made it. And as musicians, we are prayer warriors. As musicians, we are praise warriors. Now, do you know what? We don't always feel like praying. We don't always feel like worshiping. But because God is with us, because he never leaves us, he never changes, we can choose. Did you forget? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's a three letter word. It starts with the letter J. I know you've got it now. We can choose joy. That's right, every single day we can choose joy. We can choose it, we can wear it on our faces, we can talk about it, and we can sing it. I choose joy in the morning, I choose joy in the evening, I choose joy in every part of my day. Now here we go. Kindergarten and first graders, I want you to tap your legs as you're singing it next time. Tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. And second and third graders, I want you to tap your head as you sing it this next time. Fourth and fifth graders, you've got it. You're gonna snap it. You're gonna snap it. And if you can't snap it, you're gonna clap it, clap it, clap it, clap it. Here we go. Drum it or tap it or snap it. And ready, go. I choose joy in the morning. I choose joy in the evening. I choose joy in every part of my day. That's it. Now I know for some of you that are wearing headphones, your mom and dad are looking at you like, what in the world are you doing? Well, you know what? We are making some noise for Jesus. We're inviting God's presence into this day saying, yes, God, you're with me and I am gonna choose joy. I've invited Pastor Jay to share with us for a few minutes today so listen carefully to what he tells us about making some noise. Hey musicians, are you guys singing your faces off at home? This is Pastor Jay here, and I miss seeing you guys. I miss seeing you running through the hallway, lined up outside of Mrs. Snyder's classroom, all your smiling faces and all the noise that happens. And here's what I bet I believe. It's so quiet here at the school and the church during the week, but I bet it's not so quiet at your house and uh, here's the thing that you want to remember during this time in all of your noise making your parents might be going a little bit cuckoo from all your noise but just when you see your parents about to kind of go crazy this is what I want you to do turn the noise from just loud kid noise into maybe singing your favorite worship song noise because it's not bad to be noisy it's not bad to be noisy uh, there are times where it's not the best to be noisy, but if you're gonna make a noise, you know, the Bible talks about making a joyful noise. And so maybe go around the house and, and as you're doing some chores or as you're working on your schoolwork or as you're, you're doing di different things with your siblings or whatever, just start to sing a song. And um, it doesn't have to sound good. Remember, it just has to be joyful. Uh, but all of you guys always sound good. So here's what I want you to remember, that noise is what God made you to make. And uh, noise is what God made you to make. Just like we talk about on Palm Sunday, when all the people were shouting for Jesus and they were praising him, and some of the people got mad, they said, tell them to be quiet. Tell them to be quiet. That noise is too loud. And furthermore, they're saying the wrong thing because they were saying, 
Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. And Jesus said, they have to be noisy. In fact, if they don't make this noise, if they don't worship me, even the rocks are going to start crying out. And so Jesus says, I like noisy kids. I like people making noise, but making the right noise. So would you make some good noise today? Make some noise to praise Jesus. And uh, I'm sure your parents are going to love it. Hey, I might even be able to hear you all the way from here. God bless you guys. Don't you love it when Pastor Jay gives us permission to make some noise? But remember what he said, it's got to be good noise. It's got to be worship noise. It's got to be things that will encourage your moms and dads, that will encourage your family around you. You know, one thing that I'm really missing a lot this spring is about this time, we would be, if we were in school like we normally are in the spring, we would be making a lot of concert noise right now. We'd be practicing in our classrooms, in the music room. We would be practicing human videos and choreography. We would be practicing different instrumental solos and vocal solos and scripture reading parts. We would be doing so much to prepare for the concert. I'm sad that it's not gonna happen the way that it always has happened. But do you know what? It's all right because we are Cedar Park Christian Eagles and we are flexible. No worries, if we can't be in the sanctuary together, we are gonna figure out another way. And in just a few minutes, I'm gonna tell you what that is. But before I do, I'd like to tell you a story about one of my very, very favorite composers. I think I have a couple friends who would like to listen to the story too. Come here, Piper. Come here, Mings. Are you ready to listen? Come here, Mings. Come on. They said the best thing about spring is that we get to listen to music so much more at home than we normally would. Do you know what? When I play the piano, they, as soon as they hear me playing, they come over and they jump. They beg to jump up on, on the piano bench. They love to listen to piano music and they love to look out the window. The story that I'd like to tell you is about a very famous composer. His name is George Friedrich Handel. Now I know many of you recognize his name because at almost every one of our Christmas concerts, we sing a Christmas piece that Mr. Handel wrote. He lived almost 300 years ago. He was born in Germany, then later moved to England. He lived in the 1700s, about the same time as Thomas Jefferson lived in the United States. Around the same time, a little bit before, but around the same time as the Declaration of Independence was signed. Look at that hairstyle. I am so glad that boys don't wear wigs like that today. Can you imagine Pastor Pickles in the wigs like that? I think he'd be pretty goofy. I know some of you are saying, but Mrs. Snyder, my hair is about that long right now because I haven't been to the barber in weeks. Well, Mr. Handel, from a very young age, was a musician. He loved music. He loved to sing. He loved to play instruments, just like you. At your age, he was composing. He was singing. He was worshiping God in his way. Well, about the middle of his career, one of his friends wrote a manuscript, which means many different pieces of writing put together. And this manuscript contained the story of Christmas and the story of Easter. It was designed to be read at Easter, but he put many scriptures together and he handed it to his friend, George Friedrich, and said, could you write music to this? Well, Mr. Handel took that manuscript and he went to his room. He went to his room and you know what? He stayed in his room for 24 days. Now, I know you're feeling like, well, that's nothing. We've been in our house for many more days than that. But you know what? He went to his room and he stayed in his room. He didn't go outside to play. He didn't go down into the living room to hang out with his family. He didn't go to different parts of his house. He stayed in his bedroom. Well, he probably did go down the hall to the bathroom. But other than that, he stayed in his bedroom for 24 days. He wrote and wrote and wrote. He read the manuscript that his friend had, had, had given to him. His heart was so touched by all of the scripture, all of God's word in that. And he just continued writing. His 
family would leave him meals outside of his door. Sometimes he would open the door and eat them, and sometimes he didn't even eat. He just kept writing and writing for 24 days. And at the end of 24 days, he had completed one of the most famous works of music that has ever been written called The Messiah. Now, this copy of The Messiah is a really special copy for me because it was my dad's. My dad was a tenor, which is the, the male vocalist who sings high. And my dad sang from the Messiah that Mr. Handel wrote. Each of you have also sang parts of the Messiah. Do you remember the song at Christmas time? For unto us a child is born. That was written by George Friedrich Handel. And also, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That was written by Handel, or the one that we ended the elementary concert with this last year was just a remix of the Hallelujah Chorus. A little bit jazzy style was. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, Mr. Handel wrote that when he was contained in his room. He wrote, I didn't count every single note, but I read several articles that said that people have counted the number of notes in the Messiah and guess how many notes were written. He had to write them out. He didn't have a computer that would write music for him. He had to write them out just like we do on the board in music. He wrote them out and there were over a quarter of a million notes that he wrote in 24 days. That's 250,000. That is a ton of notes. He kept writing and writing and writing Wow, that is truly amazing. And you know, at the end of the Messiah, he wrote these three Latin words, soli deo gloria. For any of you Latin scholars out there, you might know what they mean. But if you don't know Latin, I'll tell you what it means. It means all for the glory of God. I thought, Mr. Handel is just like us. He wrote music to glorify God and bless others. And so that's what we're going to do for our concert this year. We are going to, in your homes, sing a song, say a scripture verse, play a solo on your favorite instrument. And if you don't want to do something like that, you could even paint a picture and write a scripture on that. But what I want you to do is you sing it, you write it, you play it at home. Then have your moms and dads or your brother or sister videotape you on their phone and then email me your video of your concert piece. Send it to me and for the month of May, we will be featuring special musicians from Cedar Park. Tell you what, I have a prize. For the first person who emails me every week, you will receive a gift card for either a McDonald's McFlurry or a Dairy Queen Blizzard. So the first one, who emails me their video each week for the month of May will win a prize. I am so excited to hear the songs you share. And if you would like to learn more about George Friedrich Handel, I've included a few links in the email to your parents, or you can check below this video and find them there as well. Enjoy listening. <laughs> 